Okay, so we're proving circle theorems. This is the second one we're proving, the angle at the centre theorem. Now, we've proven one before this, uh, that is the angle in a semicircle. And you should remember that that's a 90 degree angle there. Now, this theorem is kind of like this theorem uh, on steroids, a stepped up little notch. Let's take a look at it. This is the one you're familiar with, the semicircle, right? So 180 degrees, so we're going right across the diameter. And then doesn't matter where we put this point, we get a 90 degree angle. So that's pretty cool. Now, watch what happens if I move one of these points to stop it from being a semicircle. All right, I'm just going to pick a random point here. Now we have 143 degrees there and 71.5. Now, if you do the maths in your head, this is half of that, or that is double that. And now I can move my point to a different spot. Let's move this one over here somewhere. Now, again, try doing the maths in your head. 129 degrees for this angle, uh, 64.5 for this angle. This is half of that. And that is what our circle theorem states. The thing that we're proving is that if this is angle beta, this must be angle 2 beta. It must be twice as large. Uh, now, the like fancy words for this is the angle at the centre, that's easy, is twice, is double, that angle subtended by the same arc. All right, so subtended by the same arc, this is the arc they're referring to. So they're saying the angle at the centre of that arc is twice the angle subtended by the same arc. And subtended means drawing a line from one half, one point at the arc to the other end of the arc, or extreme of the arc, uh, to uh, the outside of the circle. All right, so as long as we are okay with that, we can now start proving it. Prove the angle at the center theorem. Now we're gonna use a lot of the same techniques that we used for the last one. So I'm gonna start off by constructing some sort of line here. And of course, that means that we have a radius, a radius, and a radius here, which means that we have a bunch of isosceles triangles floating. Isosceles, isosceles. So I'm just going to write up a bunch of stuff here, A, B, C, and O for the origin. So that's the point there. Um, now I can say that A, O equals B, O equal B, C, uh, because they're all radii. And I can say that triangle uh, ABO and triangle BCO isosceles. All right, now I'm going to label up a bunch of angles here. Uh, I can say now that uh, this X and this X, they're equal. And I can label this one as a Y and this one as a Y. Now, technically, I really should write down why x is equal to x. So I can say something like uh, angle uh, ABO. So you got to, if you want this angle here, you've got to say AB, get to the center of it, and then go out again. So ABO equals angle um, BAO. And we can say the reason is that because of isosceles triangles, uh, let angle ABO equal X. And so I've, that's what I've done there. And then we can do something similar by saying that angle um, BCO is equal to angle CBO because of isosceles triangles. And I can let uh, angle BCO equal y. All right, now what else can I do from here? Let's label this m and let's label this n, right? Uh, and so I can say that um, m equals 180 minus 2x. And I can also say that n equals 180 minus 2y. Now, both of those reasons are the same because the internal angles of a triangle are 180 degrees, right? So all of that would have to add up to 180. So that must be 180 minus 2y. All of this would have to add up to 180. 
So um, m must be equal to 180 minus 2x. All right, and I'm just going to put in maybe one more little angle here. I'm going to call this angle, this angle right here, I'm going to call it q. All right, so I have this thing here where I can say that m plus n plus q equals uh, 360. And I can start working on uh, m being 180 minus 2x, n being 180 minus 2x, now uh, 2y, sorry, uh, plus q equals 360. Now, what can I do with this? Well, 180 minus 2x plus 180 minus 2y plus q. I can move the 180s from this side of the equation to the other side. Now, I should just note um, m plus n plus q equals 360 because there's 360 degrees in a circle. Right. Okay. Now, if I take the 180 there and I move it to the other side, minus 180, that one minus 180, what I'm left with is negative 2x, negative 2y plus q equals 0. Okay, that means that q equals 2x plus 2y. Let's take a look at our picture here. q equals 2x plus 2y. q equals 2 x plus y. Q is equal to double x plus y. We have proven it. Q, E, D. I finish this off by saying, therefore, angle A, O, C, which is Q, is equal to two times angle A, B, C, which is that x plus y on the top there. All right, so you can see it is a little bit similar to proving that semicircle one. Again, we know that this is true. The Greeks figured it out centuries ago. We need you to show full and clear working for why you're doing the things that you're doing.